Fire Girls and for Fire Girls Row back again with another reading. This time it is a it is a what I am feeling energy message for the collective for the week of January twenty second to the twenty eighth of twenty twenty four. Again, that's the what I am feeling energy message for January twenty second to the twenty eighth of twenty twenty four. I hope you guys are staying healthy, happy, and safe out there, and I appreciate all the love and the support that you guys give to me and to the channel. It is much appreciated. So the astrological overview of the week is going to be pretty interesting it's going to be a lot of energy to where some people might try to start some stuff with you like arguments or bringing up things of the past okay so there's going to be starting out the week on monday there's going to be a lazy t-square that could make everyone around you including yourself irritable on monday so if you're going into a nine to five job or even if you work online and you have to collaborate with others if you can avoid working in groups because this day people are not going to take criticism well okay whether they're getting it or <laughs> giving it or receiving it okay this is going to be like a very grumpy energy okay so this energy is going to continue on from monday on into tuesday so people are going to be really quick to anger. They're going to be bringing up stuff from the past, like old arguments that y'all might have had last year or a couple months ago. They're going to bring that back up and use it as a way to nitpick at you or dig in or get their shots in, okay? On Wednesday, this is the day where things can kind of sort of try to calm down. But uh, enjoy the peace while it lasts because, yeah, that energy, that chaotic grumpy energy is going to be coming back during the rest of the week so if you want to do something that or try to stay calm and centered on wednesday do that uh schedule any meetings or social gatherings that you have on that day on wednesday um because on thursday we're going to have a full moon and it's going to be part of a t-square that's going to drag pluto and jupiter okay <laughs> into the mix and that's going to create something like a cannonball or a powder keg i should say okay so yeah it's gonna be very interesting uh especially on thursday so if you've been around people who have been disordered messy chaotic trying to start mess with you this is the time where you're gonna really see them clearly for some of y'all y'all have been ignoring what people have been doing so this is the day that you're going to see them for who they are and you're going to have to move and act accordingly, okay? Um, yeah, so that day, Thursday, it's not going to be too bad, even though it seems chaotic. It's going to give you the time to work on things spiritually and move forward from there on, and well, Friday too as well. On the weekend though, uh, on Saturday, it's a great time to spend time with your family and the friends in the daytime or go on a daytime date if you're doing that. Um, if you like to work out or to do chores, so Saturday is a good time to do that. Sunday is a good time to um, for romance if you're into that or whatever or socializing. So, like I said, it's going to be up and down. So, you have to really judge it and judge the energy for yourself to know which situations you should or should not put yourself in. Like I always tell you guys, use your own intuition, okay? So, um, yeah, advice for the week. Uh, if you feel like you're walking on eggshells around people in your life, whether it be on your job, in your personal life, whatever the case may be, you might need to kind of sort of sidestep those people and, <laughs> and go on about your business. Um, but as far as the weekend goes, if you're looking, if you're single and you're looking to meet someone, you can. the weekend will be a great time to do that. The top astrological event of the week is going to happen on Sunday. Venus is going to be in Capricorn and it's going to trine Jupiter and Taurus. So if you're looking for a reliable partner, whether it, mostly romantic, this is someone who will have your back through thick and thin, then this energy is going to make it a, a whole lot easier or things are going to be happening to where you can meet someone or go on a date with someone who has that energy that you're looking for just saying okay that was a lot so if you want to go back and rehash that you can just rewind the video okay but we're going to get into the astro cards and then we're going to get into the tarot 
And then I'll work with her. Now see, <laughs> splitting the egg. Mercury is back again. And Pluto. Remember I was telling y'all about Pluto coming in. So get ready. Alright, so Divine Holy Spirit, what energies will the collective be working with for the week of January 22nd to the 28th of 2024? You. Okay. We have Saturn. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Saturn. That's a uh, roof Capricorn. Like I was telling you about Capricorn is going to be trining Jupiter and Taurus. So there you go. Uh, what else we got for the collective? Ooh. Now that one popped out, but we're going to take these two. Semi sextile allowing encourages, sees the potential in, clarifies, gives hopes to, compensates, intuitive tempers, responds, cycles, grows, realizes, and rewards. So, like I told some of y'all, you're going to see someone or something for what it is or who they are this week. So, get ready. Six house, craft, work, details, health, well being, diet, service, daily rituals, contribution. Remember, I was talking about if you guys wanted to work out. This is the week to do it. Purification of skills, apprenticeship, and method. Okay. Interesting. All right. Divine Holy Spirit, what additional energies will the collective be working with for the week of January 20? Okay. And y'all see those for that. Okay. We have Pisces for Mystic. Okay. And that's imaginative, imaginative compassionate, healing, empathetic. Mystical, adoring, magical, allowing, dreamy, ephemeral, enigmatic, spiritual, emotional, escapist, impractical, oceanic, self-pitying, and illogical, Piscean energy. And then, wow, there goes again, Chiron, that healing energy. Healing powers, growth, amends, release, personal development, inherited issues, self-doubt, generational trauma, shame, sensitivity, forgiveness, superpowers, divinity, cleansing, softness, and pain. Chiron was in last week's uh, reading, I believe, as well. Okay. And there goes Virgo, the alchemist. Uh, methodical, aligned, ritualistic, efficient, insightful, healthy, dutiful, discerning, witchy, subtle, pure, refined, accurate, solitary, curatorial, critical, nervous, and perfectionist. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So I can get that to stand up there. Okay. All right. Anything else for the week? Okay. Can't make this stuff up. We have Pluto transformation. It's renewal, inner resources, basic instinct, motivation, personal power, evolution, com composting self, psych. <laughs> Composting. Okay, composting cycles, death, rebirth, subversion, suspicion, obsession, intensity, reckoning, taboos, and clearing extremes. Okay. Pluto wanted to be seen. And this was on the bottom. Outlook, worldview, mission statement, expression, effect, role, mark, attitude, out of self, point of view, body image, aura, likeness, approach. Impact and first impressions. Give me one second. <clears throat> All right, so let's get into the tarot. All right, Divine Holy Spirit, what additional messages do you have for the collective for the week of January 22nd to the 28th of 2024? As always, guys, as I tell you with any tarot reading, take only the messages that apply to you in your particular situation. As this is a weekly forecast, you have to come back and see how the energy plays out for you, around you, and Okay, straight out the gate, the magician, the alchemist, just saying. 
the devil. That's Capricorn energy, Saturn energy. Can't make this stuff up. Six of Cups. Strength card. The Wheel of Fortune. Just Jupiter. Rule by Jupiter. The Seven of Cups. And the Seven of Swords. Okay. Five of Pentacles. So some of y'all have been feeling like this. That energy is changing and it's going to be changing rapidly that's what i'm picking up on i'm asking why that's what i'm feeling see that's pluto energy right behind it, the tower can't make this stuff up okay so whatever it is you guys are working on or dealing with things are going to be changing rapidly so keep that in mind um for some of y'all some stuff is being rectified that sounds rough uh from your past or how someone saw you or how you see yourself for a lot of y'all or how you see someone else it's going to be rectified in how you see someone or how they see you or something from your past is going to be rectified uh, with the six of cups i feel like things are being balanced out in your favor the scales are being balanced um for a lot of you something is being balanced out financially like I said, with the Six of Cups here, that's what I'm feeling. I don't know why. Along with the Wheel of Fortune, it's something to where you were getting the short end of the stick in your reality or just in life in general is going to be, things are going to be balanced out. That wheel is going to turn in your favor. With the Strain card, I feel like a lot of you guys uh, have been going through something and you didn't know your own strength. You didn't know your own power. But I feel like you're going to, it's like you've been on a wheel literally the wheel of fortune is here plodding and trying along trying to um make the best out of a bad situation or not so good situation and you're going to get traction whatever that means for you take it how it resonates with the seven of cups here i feel like this is options but be careful with what you pick okay when you're picking if you're presented with options for some of y'all there are some options that are going to be around you that could be in potential romantic partners job offers uh, projects on the job, business projects, whatever it is for you, take it how it resonates, okay, and how it applies to you in your particular situation. That Seven of Cups also, like I was saying, the wool is going to be pulled from over your eyes about a particular person, place, or thing, or situation. It's up to you to see it clearly, and you will see it clearly. You're going to see how you've been lied to, manipulated, or used as a pawn. Oh, geez, where did that come from, okay? Whether this be in your own personal life, in your job, in your business endeavors, in the world, on the world stage, it's coming. You, it's going to be seen and it's going to be undeniable. Okay, It's going to be this here. And y'all know the uh, that's seven of the sword. The wolves being pulled up. I don't. That, that would ask me. That's what I keep feeling. Y'all got the five of pentacles. The tower behind it. That's Pluto energy as well. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Let's see. That's what I keep feeling like the you the collective is going to see somebody hold know what me said. Okay, so some stuff is gonna be revealed during this week, so do with that what you think you should. I'm just saying. <laughs> do with that what you think you should. All right. Divine Holy Spirit, what additional? Okay. So we have the goddess Pravati, the goddess of devotion. I am a love that doesn't leave. When I commit to love, my soul evolves. Okay. So that is the energy that is going to be, or the goddess, I should say, that you guys could work with to help you get through the week and far beyond. Let me give you a little bit more information on her. Let's see here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, Pravati, the goddess of devotion. Who is she? Pravati embodies the divine strength of devotion. She is the mountain that love becomes when we devote ourselves to another and to our own soul. Like healing yourself, honing your craft, working on yourself, manifesting for yourself. Okay, then. Transmuting old energy into new energies and new beginnings. Pravati is the Hindu goddess of fertility, of love and devotion, and of divine strength and power. Come on now. Strain cars in right there. 
okay she is the gentle nurturing aspect of shakti or feminine energy she is part of the true devi a trinity of powerful hindu goddesses together with lakshmi and saraswati Parvati's name means she of the mountain her icons and depictions date back to 400 bce before the common era she is shiva's wife and holds his trident and she is the mother of ganesha the hindu god who removes all obstacles shiva lives with pravati in her house on mount kailash their favorite pastime is discovering hindu theology traditionally in india a woman goes to live with her husband's family so this reversal reveals pravati's priority and power by living on Mount Kailash, Shiva becomes part of Pravati's lineage. She is the bond that connects all human beings, a bond of love that helps our souls evolve and heal. Okay. When you're, when this card comes up, what is soft, gentle, and nurturing like water can be far more powerful than what is inflexible and fierce. The energy of this mountain goddess is about the strength we can give and receive when we devote ourselves to the healthy bonds of love. Pravati is the divine feminine potency of being calm, being a calm, benevolent presence, especially when something seems to threaten a deeply meaningful relationship. Transformation with this goddess calls for a softening. When a situation is hard, even painful, Pravati is suggesting that you allow your fists to unfold open and release what is clenched in fear or stress remember i was telling you about chaos and stress during the week okay remember that your love is a mountain that cannot be moved and that this bond between you is holy no human hands or words can ever break it the answer of what's next or highest for you can be found through the solar act of simply abiding not reacting, not running, not hiding. A deep reservoir of power can surge up from within us when we choose to remain present, letting devotion inhabit us in moments when our ego has typically fled and fuses us with the capacity to transform all of our relationships. Devotion is not attachment. It's letting go of the illusion, Seven of Cups energy right here, that you and this lover, this friend, this child, or family member, this soul within you, can ever really be separate from you. Devotion brings us home to the point and purpose of every relationship. Love. A love that can never leave and that, like a mountain, can never move. A love that evolves the soul. So the soul voice meditation, if you choose to partake, what am I most devoted to in this moment? And answer it. The intention of this card, I am a love that doesn't leave. When I commit to love, my soul evolves. That's befitting. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that is all I have for the collective for the What I Am Feeling Energy Message for January 22nd to the 28th of 2024. I hope you guys enjoyed the reading. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. Share, subscribe, join our tribe, hit that notification bell, and check out my book, Lux Nard Dress Rehearsal. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.